The language and accessibility settings for Chromebooks are a lifeline for students that need them, but when not used appropriately, they can disrupt classroom instruction. Let's take a look at the best practices for configuring the language and accessibility features of your Chromebook fleet. Hi, my name is John Sowash. Welcome to the Google Admin Bootcamp. If you'd like to follow along, I'm logged into the admin console and I'm going to be looking at the device settings page. And the path for that is devices, Chrome settings. And we'll be looking at both the device settings and in just a minute, we'll flip over to the user and browser settings. I'm going to scroll down to, I think it's the second section. So we start with enrollment. I'm going to scroll down to sign in settings. And that's where I'm going to see the first set of options related to accessibility and language. Now, these features are very important. Um, if you have students with special learning needs, the accessibility options can be a lifeline for them. If you have students who uh, speak a second language, you know, adjusting that language can be very, very useful. However, there are also situations where students mess around with these settings and cause issues, changing the default language to Chinese and logging off, and then it's just a huge pain to um, reconfigure it so that other people can use uh, the device normally. So the two things we're gonna look at first are under device, and this is where you're gonna see um, sign in language. And this is where you can specify English as the default language. And so again, what's going to happen is a student signs in, they mess around with the language, or maybe they need it to be in a different language. Well, as soon as they sign out, it's going to revert back to whatever your default is. And typically, you would uh, set that to English. It will not impact a student's ability, user's ability to change that language, but it always reverts back to uh, your default uh, when they're done. So that's an easy one that uh, should alleviate some issues. Uh, there's another option right here, accessibility control. Um, and this will allow um, students to change the accessibility options, but when they log out, it disables those accessibility options. Uh, and again, that just prevents um, any issues with the next user uh, being bothered by those options that they may not need. These are both device settings. So it's very important that when you're changing these, you need to make sure that you are changing them for the organizational unit that contains your devices. If there are no devices in this OU, it's not going to do anything. Now, in just a minute, we're going to talk about user settings and we'll need to apply those to um, some of the user options. Now, you can continue scrolling down and there is an entire section here related to the sign in accessibility options. In general, I'm reluctant to just flat out disable these because again, for a student that needs them, they are very important and very helpful. Now, there are a couple that have been problematic in the past. Probably the one that is uh, the biggest issue is Chrome Vox, which just causes a lot of noise um, and isn't always necessary. Um, but in general, I wouldn't disable these unless you're having uh, regular issues. Um, you can even decide to show or hide these accessibility options. This is just the option to toggle them on and off under accessibility shortcuts. Let's pop over now to the user and browser settings and look at those. So again, these apply to your, to your devices and these are going to apply to your users. The first thing we're going to want to do once we are in this section is go ahead and select whatever organizational unit you want to make that change to. So if this is going to be for your students, for example, I'd want to make sure I click on my student OU that has student users in it. Same thing. Um, we're going to scroll down and I'm just going to search control F for accessibility and that'll bring me uh, to the options. This again, I'm going to see very similar to what we just looked at in devices. These are all the different accessibility options. And by default, they're set to allow the user to decide. Now, in general, I would encourage you to do that. Let people turn on or off the ones that they want. One thing that I would recommend changing is down at the bottom. And it's this one right here, accessibility options in the system tray menu. It would be my recommendation that you go ahead and turn this on. So show accessibility options. Now, the only thing that does, I'll show you on my Chromebook here, is it's just going to put this accessibility option right here. 
That's all it does. The end user has to open that up and then toggle on or off the accessibility options they wish to use. One of the first things that I show teachers and students is how to enable this manually, but it's a whole lot nicer if it's just there for them. Now, I have a whole video on accessibility options for Chromebooks specifically targeted at teachers so that they understand them and they can um, show students how to use them. Um, and I'll link to that video at the end of this one. The um, accessibility options that I feel that are the most useful um, would include dictation. I mean, it works just like it does in your phone. Um, at the bottom of the screen, you're going to get a little speaker icon and that works on any text field. Uh, it's very good. The other one is select to speak. This is a read aloud option where you highlight something and it just reads it to you. Um, those two in particular are very useful and I might even consider enabling them by default. It would alleviate some of the stigma related to, oh, I'm turning on an accessibility feature, no one else is using it. If it's just on for everybody, then I feel students are a little more apt to use it. I use those features on a regular basis. I use um, dictation especially all the time. So I wouldn't enable all of them, but those in particular I think are useful. If you're interested in more Google admin tips like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested in in-depth training on how to use the Google Admin Console effectively, I'd like to invite you to join me for the Google Admin Bootcamp, my live virtual training that will cover all aspects of managing a Google Workspace domain.